And tensions are rising overseas, where North Korea has launched two missiles into the Sea of Japan. Haley Ott is following this, along with other major stories around the world for us this morning. Haley, what can you tell us? Good morning, Anne-Marie. Yes, we begin today on the Korean Peninsula, where North Korea has launched two suspected short-range ballistic missiles into the sea. This would be the first time North Korea has launched a ballistic missile in about a year, and the first since President Biden took office. The launch comes after Pyongyang fired two other short-range projectiles over the weekend. Today's missiles flew around 280 miles before landing harmlessly in the sea. The Biden administration is currently carrying out a policy review on North Korea, and experts say today's launch is a clear message to the White House. Now, back to Egypt and the situation in the Suez Canal, where a massive cargo ship remains wedged sideways into the banks, blocking all traffic. Efforts to dislodge the boat resumed this morning at high tide, but one marine service warned that wind and the sheer size of the vessel were hampering attempts to refloat it. 12 percent of global trade goes through the Suez Canal, which has been blocked since the 1,300-foot Ever Given got trapped on Tuesday. Oil prices surged on Wednesday in part due to the blockage. To Europe now, where the EU has proposed tougher controls on coronavirus vaccine exports from its territory. The proposed new regulations come after drug manufacturer AstraZeneca reportedly failed to deliver some of its promised doses to the bloc, but continued to meet targets in other countries. There's been some controversy, however, after 29 million doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine were discovered in a factory in Italy. Critics claimed the doses were being stockpiled there, but AstraZeneca says they're part of the global COVAX program. EU leaders will meet later today to discuss the proposed measures. Finally, to Kenya, where authorities have ordered the closure of two massive camps housing hundreds of thousands of refugees from neighboring Somalia and South Sudan. The Kenyan government has given the UN Refugee Agency 14 days to draw up a plan to close the Dadaab and Kakuma camps, where half a million people live. It's threatened to drop some refugees off at the Somalian border if the camps aren't closed, according to media reports. The UNHCR has urged Kenya to continue providing protection to people who need it, especially in the context of the coronavirus pandemic. Anne-Marie? Indeed, Haley. Uh, thank you very much.